from this point, the wristband is your identity. This is your marker. Here at this Maryland test facility, Science Applications International Corporation, or SAIC, is testing its latest advancements in AI data collection and analysis. Smile or no smile? The goal? To be able to accurately identify you in different environments using biometrics and eliminate bias in facial recognition technology. This is the most scientific approach to this, which mm. doesn't allow us to get caught into race labels and other data collection. CEO Tony Towns Whitley believes SAIC can set the global standard for biometric identification. This is one example of how SAIC integrates its technology, engineering and science into military, national security and government missions to ensure they run faster and ultimately more securely. A year into the role as CEO of the $7.1 billion company, Towns Whitley is on a mission to transform a 55-year-old defense tech firm by using ethical AI to shape our national security. So, Rochelle, here we have your data. Towns Whitley wants SAIC to set the standard in biometric image capture and analysis to get to what she calls the ground truth on identity by using science-based proof versus speculation or bias that can be introduced in the data input or algorithms. She analyzed these biases as part of her former team that built the first ethical AI framework for Microsoft and is using the same kinds of frameworks to shape SAIC. How do you define ethical AI and, and how is it used in this facility? AI is really a category of technologies and capabilities. And across that category, um, we've talked about the ethics as almost an algorithm in of itself. Think of the ethics as a portfolio of understanding the maturity of the technology, its, its ability to actually do what it says. Was the AI itself ethical? It was just simply immature in many, many ways. Beyond the maturity of the technology was when that technology is applied, what are the sensitive uses, the consequences uh, of that technology? And have we thought about those in terms of the consequences on humans, on processes, um, the sort of judicial consequences on the justice system, the consequences in different industries. And here we've got science-based proof of how to get to ground truth on identity, on facial recognition. Towns Whitley believes these advancements have the potential to deter bad actors and better protect the country. If you were at a dinner party and you're just trying to describe to them what SAIC does in layman's terms, how would you, how would you describe it? I think of SAIC sitting at an intersection where with military customers, with national security customers, and with government agencies, agencies that people do understand, Department of Transportation, the Federal Aviation Administration that handles air traffic control, the VA that supports veterans all over the world, within the Department of Homeland Security, what we do in Customs and Border Patrol. But we bring in technology, engineering, and science to integrate and innovate those missions so they can do more, faster, and more securely. Towns Whitley left her role as Microsoft's president of regulated industries to become CEO of SAIC on October 2nd, 2023, headquartered in Reston, Virginia. Just days into her new role, a deadly conflict erupted between terror group Hamas and US ally Israel. So as soon as that conflict was, was communicated, SAIC had teams on the ground supporting customers that were uh, providing capabilities there. So think about the decision analytics. You're in the middle of a global conflict. What data is flowing? How can that data be shared, not only with the U.S. forces, but multiple coalition forces? One of the things we specialize in is what we call multi-level security. It sounds very techy and cool. What it really means is the ability to integrate data and provide data at every classification level. Key customers include the Departments of Defense, Justice and Homeland Security, as well as the State Department and NASA. The top priorities of these customers were filtered down to five national imperatives launched under Towns Whitley. Undersea dominance, border of the future, citizen experience, all domain warfighting, and next generation space. When we launched the imperatives, I actually thought it was gonna be more of an external message. It became an internal rallying message for our team. Since becoming CEO, SAIC share price has grown more than 30%, most analysts see SAIC as well positioned for growth thanks to profitable new and existing contracts, efficient resource management, and long-term AI potential, though some analysts remain cautious about long-term profitability and debt. 
anti-war activists and environmental, social and governance investors argue that companies like SAIC, with 75% of revenue coming from defense and national security contracts, are profiting from war. This organization is all about moving the mission forward, about protecting this country, and about changing the way citizens engage with their government. And so I, I feel no uh, concern about where our heart and our head is, that you can do good things and also make money and take care of our shareholders and meet the expectations. Towns Whitley was raised as the daughter of a three-star general and a mother she describes as the true general of the household. I grew up as a daughter of public servants. So the idea of serving was super critical. It was part of our faith, it was part of our family, part of the fabric of all things that we did. So there was no question that you were gonna serve. It's just a matter of where you would serve, when you would serve, and how long you would serve. That duty also meant sacrifice. Towns Whitley moved 11 times before graduating from high school. After graduating from Princeton University with a degree in economics and public policy, her dedication to service led her to the Peace Corps, spending three years in Gabon in Central Africa. Those three years in Gabon and on the equator, they were critical. I learned a lot about cross-culture. I learned a lot about who I was, a lot about dealing with other people, and a lot about how do you shore up in some resilience through difficult times. When I think of where you are now, one of two black women CEOs in the Fortune 500, the first black CEO of a publicly traded defense company. Are you surprised that we're still hitting some of these firsts and, and onlys in, in 2024? You know, I'm a daughter of first twos, we called it growing up. You know, my parents were first to do something in their category. And at some point, as, as much as that's celebrated, you get to a point where you say, how long are we gonna talk about first twos? We shouldn't say things like, wow, how bold it is that a company has uh, a, a brown or black sea. That's not bold. That person has earned the right to be there. So we have to be careful for our words. But I think part of this is about encouraging. That's what I love about applied innovation. Tech is an industry that in some ways it's sort of democratizing. Early in her career, Towns Whitley developed a keen eye for how technology could drive public good. I was part of building the first ethical framework for AI that was done there at Microsoft. And we have the same kinds of frameworks here about how we think about the maturity of what we're building, how we think about the consequences of the use of the technology that we're building. Towns Whitley doesn't just talk about AI innovation in abstract. At SAIC, she's applying it in real life ways. For example, did you know that SAIC trains every air traffic controller in the United States using operational AI? We can create and simulate an environment where they can get better training. They can use technology to augment their own knowledge and more faster training on how to be an excellent air traffic controller. That's the kind of use of AI that most consumers and citizens want to see. They want to see augmented learning. Again, you're Thank you. All right, you go ahead and take a seat right over here. Back at SAIC's 24,000-square-foot testing facility, scientists continue to test ways AI can bring security, technology, and public trust together in good, profitable ways. Talk about some of the capabilities of what's done here, because some people might not understand sort of the real-world applications that come from here. Yeah, so this is a facility like none of nowhere else in the world. And what this is doing, this center, is, is allowing SAIC in partnership with the Department of Homeland Security to really test with biometrics how artificial intelligence and other ways that we capture images, how, those, how accurate they are and how efficiently we can capture those images. So we really have two forms of measurement, the, the efficacy or the effectiveness of the capture of the image, and then the efficiency, how long that takes and what that process. In some ways, it's, it's almost a an experiment on, on citizen experience, on how does the citizen engage with the government using technology to learn how accurately they're depicted in various images and to understand how those images then can be used and validated. Perfect, and okay. then it comes up here on my screen. To do this, SAIC has set up a selfie station, testing how different phones collect data and how that data is used for image authentication. Think about the way we authenticate ourselves. Oftentimes we're asked to send in yes. a photo or send it, take a selfie and send it. And the matching is being done uh, sort of remotely. So this is the way we test mm -hmm. the validity of that matching. And there's more and more of this sort of self sort of self-authentication uh, going on. It's not only the technology that Towns Whitley is focused on, but the way in which it's used that will set SAIC apart from the rest. When you talk about SAIC in 55 more years, as you look forward, it's not just the tech that we've brought or the engineering, it's how we've implemented it 
and how we do it in a way that we can operate around the world with any kind of technology, that's gonna be the secret sauce going forward.